I'm Tim Segman with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Uh, today we're going to be out here talking about preparing your pastures for uh, conversion to native grasslands. Uh, and the first thing we usually do is look at uh, doing some sort of herbicide treatments uh, to treat the existing sand of non-native perennials. Here we have a lot of uh, Bermuda grass and Bahia grass, which are both pretty troublesome. Uh, as of right now, our methodology usually relies upon a 41% glyphosate herbicide, such as uh, Roundup or Eraser or Mad Dog, many other trade names that are out there. Um, it usually takes multiple applications dealing with re-sprouts from roots and then also from the seed bank for Bahia grass. Uh, typically, we prepare the ground by shredding it um, and getting it down to get some good regrowth after some good rainfall. Uh, getting regrowth of 4 to 10 inches and then coming back and spraying over the top with around 4 to 6 quarts per acre of that 41% glyphosate mixture. Um, Typically, it'll take multiple sprayings over the growing season. The most important thing when you're spraying these pastures is to ensure you don't leave any holes and you're able to go back and spot spray uh, any green that remains. You're really trying to eliminate anything that's there to uh, reduce the weed pressure of the warm season native grasses that we're going to plant in the, the following year, like little blue stem, Indian grass, big blue stem, switchgrass, and so on when it's time to spray, two of the most important things is glyphosate's depending on plants that are actively growing. So plants that are either drought stressed or don't have enough leaf surface area to accept the herbicide application aren't good candidates for spraying. You generally want to spray uh, anytime after a good three quarter to inch rainfall is often a good time, three to seven days after when the plants are going to be green and growing well and really susceptible to your herbicide application of glyphosate. Generally looking at spraying is going to be anytime from middle of May on uh, for these applications throughout the growing season during the summer. Generally think of days 85 degrees or warmer during the day uh, and your nighttime temperatures need to usually be above 65 or 70 degrees to ensure Bermuda grass and Bahia are growing effectively and really going to take up the herbicide well and lead to your best control. Um, so you have to reduce the number of applications overall. For Bermuda grass, you're usually looking at the higher concentrations of four to six quarts, and for Bahia grass, you're looking at three to four quarts per acre. Um, other things to consider is that Bahia grass reproduces from seed as well. So if you have a really established uh, pasture of Bahia grass, you need to look at multiple applications to deal with the existing plants and then the residual seed bank that's going to come up from seed. It can take multiple growing seasons if you have a strong infestation. Uh, Bermuda grass, it's just a matter of getting rid of the stolons and the rhizomes that come from underground, especially improved varieties like coastal or tifton or jigs and things like that. Common Bermuda grass is the only one that you typically have to worry about dealing with uh, regrowth from the seed bank. Uh, the biggest thing is staying on top of it and applying at the proper times. Make sure the plants are actively growing, they're not drought stressed, and that you're spraying when they're in that uh, four to ten or six to six to eight inches of growth is optimal uh, during during the growing season. 